What's up guys, it's JSGC here and we are here for the Everton versus Manchester City match analysis. We're going to crack on with all of the talking points that there was in this huge game for both clubs for different reasons. Everton obviously looking to try and chase down Europa League and trying to uh, overcome uh, the difficult little period that they've been going through. Manchester City of course looking to try and win and go top of the Premier League. So we're going to start off first by having a look at some team news. We're going to start off for a change by looking at Everton. Now Everton rigged the changes really didn't they Rickarlison benched with a surprise Walcott ended up starting Tom Davis captaining um, we saw Gay going into the middle Calvert-Lewin leading the line we saw Kenny going at right back Coleman was dropped Bold statements here from Marco Silva, who's obviously under the pressure and looking for Everton to show that fighting spirit needed to try and grind out results. Uh, I had a little quick look at Everton's hashtag and their Twitter and everything, uh, and a lot of people were fearing a lot about Leroy Sane going down on that left side against Kenny and against Walcott. And fear not, Leroy Sane didn't have the greatest of games here for Manchester City. I wasn't expecting Riyad Mahrez to start. I was expecting us to make four or five changes to be uh, rotated for this game and then focus again going into that home match against Chelsea. I presume we're going to see some changes for that game instead. We can't possibly have a lot of our 11 playing three games in seven days, can we? They look tired in this game. They're going to look even more tired on Sunday. So I'm expected to see some changes. So I was expected to see some in this game, but we didn't. So Bernardo moving out wide instead of obviously Riyad Mahrez starting. As we saw Gundogan going to the bench, uh, going to the starting 11 from the bench as Kevin De Bruyne was put on the bench. Obviously, Kevin De Bruyne uh, had a little niggling um, cramp in his last game, so obviously he's getting a bit of a rest for this game. I probably expect to see him start in the next game against Chelsea. We saw Laporte going in at left back too. I expect to see that a little bit more. Fabian Dell seems well down the peck in order at the moment and well out of favour with Pep and also with Benjamin Mendy seemingly being injured from uh, forever. We obviously lacking a left back and Laporte has not been uh, too bad when put in there uh, things don't look disjointed with him there so I suspect we might see him a little bit more playing in that position so Kyle Walker also playing in this game as I presumed it was going to be a back four which it was and it could alter uh, as the game goes on so it can alternate so uh, sometimes Man City will go into a back five when defending on and off the ball and they can go into a back four too and you see Man City sit deeper so when Everton were coming forward particularly in that second half we saw Gundogan dropping deeper you'd see Fernandinho dropping deeper so it ends up turning into uh, having five six even seven players tracking back at any one time which is I think what really helped us defensively in this game so there seem to be learning lessons and this is why this formation with having Laporte at left back works so well because you can have players track cover and have uh, Sane in particular uh, did all right when tracking back it allowed Laporte to go into the back and having him play at like left wing back and so yeah it didn't look too bad in my opinion now into the game itself Laporte went very close from a corner Jordan Pickford flapped and uh, somehow, Emeric Laporte missed. Um, free header, it'd be very disappointing. And more of an opportunity than what he first thought. And so he just glances at it as though he was under a load of pressure and he wasn't. And realistically, you'd expect a, a player of Laporte's quality uh, to be able to put this into the back of the net. Disappointing and an excellent chance goes begging. Next up, uh, further into the first half, the ball comes in low. I think it was from David Silva. Gundogan gets his toe onto it. Uh, off balance, ends up the ball just pinging up from close range. It's been about four or five yards out. And up pinging right into the crossbar and desperately unlucky as we were knocking onto that door. We weren't playing too great, but we're still creating enough opportunities to maybe put at least one into the back of the net, but we didn't. Uh, and so I think like fans were maybe fearing the worst. Everton going forward and they were growing into the game, particularly towards the latter parts of that first half. Everton, they were trying their hardest, they were defending well, they were looking to get forward, they were trying to get long throws, trying to get corners, trying to get into good positions. Walcott was getting into some lovely positions and putting in some balls which probably could do with some work on. Walcott reminds me a lot of Jesus Navas when he was at Manchester City, got in some lovely positions, uh, very quick, uh, great eye for position, yet final ball and quality there, always lacking and always lets him down. I get the same feeling with Theo Walcott, even though he did put in, I think, one good ball in, in the in the game, um, where Everton ended up creating an opportunity, but missed. And then right before half-time, literally on the 45th plus 1 plus 2, whatever you want to call it, basically the last gear touch before half-time. David Silva, we've got a free kick on our left, uh, into uh, so David Silva obviously going to stand over it and whip a ball into the box. Everton's marking terrible. Laporte's got a kind of three header, has a lot of work to do. Uh, and it's an absolutely brilliant header. Like I said, that opportunity that he missed earlier was a lot easier than what this chance was. And it was an absolutely brilliant header. Jordan Pickford caught flat footed and it ends up going into the back of the net. Laporte 
you beautiful man. That was a goal needed. Real pick me up uh, for us. Was looking tired, uh, and to be honest, I wished it was full time. If I'm honest, uh, but one nil. Can't really moan about that one. Uh, Lira Sane not really at the races for me in this game. Everton were doing well in the middle, being very aggressive in the middle uh, and closing down very well. So Gay and Davis, they were doing a very good job at that. Like I said, Walcott was getting into some very good positions. Uh, it, the danger was there, just the end product wasn't. Uh, and so I was looking for Manchester City to go out in the second half, get them free points that's needed and pick up that killer second now very nitty-gritty this second half there were a lot of opportunities created Everton tried a long-range shot I think it was from Gay and it was a brilliant save from Edison straight down his throat a decent effort but still the save needed to be made and it was Everton's only shot on target I think uh, and so when you've not done anything all game and you get a, a decent effort at you you need to make the save didn't flap or anything at it decent save so we can move on from there Aguero had an overhead kick I think again he had more time and space than what he realized kind of thrashes out at it uh, and end up going just wide if he realised how much time and space that he had it probably took his time doing the overhead kick and it literally just needed to kick it over his head uh, and go straight down the middle instead he puts it at a little bit of an angle and ends up working past the post um, but from there not a brilliant performance then seven minutes added on was all fear in the worst I don't know why nothing uh, much was happening in my opinion but uh, Kevin De Bruyne gets into space he came on in the second half as a substitute played in Gabriel Jesus who again came on as a substitute uh, and ends up trying to lob Jordan Pickford Bounces up off him, uh, kind of similar-ish to that Southampton goal when we got to 100 points away at Southampton last season. Uh, ends up getting his head to it, ends up looping into the back of the net. Who cares? It ends up going into the back of the net and we won this game 2-0. Full-time 2-0, huge three points. I needed two goal difference on Liverpool. Puts a little bit more pressure on them. I think we've got, is it seven goal difference on them now? Yeah, seven goal difference on Liverpool now, which is much needed. It's always going to put them under pressure. So go check the stats for this game. Wasn't a classic by any means. 61% possession for City, 39% for Everton. 15 shots for City, four on target. Four, on shot, uh, four shots for Everton, one on target. Like I said, that's safe from Edison. 547 passes. Quite low for Manchester City. Pass completion rate, just 86%. Normally at around 90%. Like I said, we're nowhere near at the races in this game. 336 passes from Everton. Uh, it's real scrappy, real dodgy game, this one. I'm really happy to come out with three points and a win. Because uh, Liverpool, I've described this as similar to that West Ham game. Team that's real fighting, trying for every ball. And Everton, a lot of fans were saying they wanted them to lose. The players on the pitch, the 11 that started, did really well and made life really difficult. And they can take a lot of confidence from that going into future games. Clear-cut chances, free created, none for Everton. Like I said, they're just lacking that uh, little bit of a clinical edge in the final third, a little bit of creativity. But they're not a million miles away. Some some people make it sound like they are, but they're not. Uh, 18 crosses put in by Everton, only one connected, three connected for City out of 10. So, yeah, more corners for Manchester City as well. In terms of defensive stats, I'm expecting Everton to dominate this one. So more tackles, more interceptions, uh, more blocks, more clearances by City because they put a lot of balls into the box. Uh, and so we've got more headed clearances and City dominated in aerial duels too and also blocked crosses. Two saves for Jordan Pickford, one for uh, Edison. And so all in all, uh, not too bad. Like I said, it's a game where it could easily have not picked up um, all three points in this game and we have. This is the performance that you need when moving forward and trying to um, win titles. This is what you need. You need to be able to grind. We're not only winning games when grinding 1-0. We're winning them 2-0, which is always healthy for our goal difference. So in terms of the performance of Manchester City, Emerick Laporte got given the man of the match. I thought he was brilliant in this game, but I thought Bernardo Silva worked his socks off. Uh, in the last five minutes or so when wasting time, I love how he just manages to get it down into their attacking third. You're not going to score from your own corner flag, but you're going to find it very difficult to do so. And the ball just seems to stick to him like glue. Another great shift from Bernardo Silva, and because everyone's given Laporte the man of the match, I'm going to give Bernardo Silva the man of the match. And, and much needed this game, put the pressure onto Liverpool. Everton, like I said, worked really hard. They've got uh, the stepping stones now to be able to build on that, so they need a good result at the weekend. They're not a million miles away. Improved their last uh, quality in the final third. And like I said, they won't be too far away from what they want to achieve, which obviously they want to get to seventh place and get Europa League football for next season. So, no favours from Everton in this game. Uh, all clear from Manchester City. We're top of the table again. Albeit Liverpool's got a game in hand. We know that Liverpool are going to be playing first on Saturday at home against Bournemouth. Not an easy game for them. A tricky game. They've not won in uh, the last two games. Liverpool in the Premier League. So they're going to be looking to try and rectify that. 
They've got the motivation now. They're sitting in second to try and make it work. It's going to define Liverpool this. Uh, if they're not going to pick up wins against Bournemouth when under pressure, then you have you have to fear the worst that they're going to capitulate from there. They've got a game against Old Trafford, uh, Man United at Old Trafford coming up too. That is their game in hand. And of course, we're playing on Sunday against Chelsea. Gets no easier for us, but we are at home. Hopefully, we can make home advantage count. Like I said, make a few changes so the squad looks fresh and pick up the win, and then we can move on from that because we've got a week's rest and we're through more difficult fixtures so on to Chelsea is what I say so we'll have a preview for that up probably Saturday morning and then we'll have an analysis up after that Chelsea game on Sunday so make sure we stay tuned for that one and make sure we can pick up three more points and stay on top of the Premier League until at least Liverpool go to Old Trafford to play Manchester United so fingers crossed we can have some results go our way this weekend of course not ruling out Spurs in this title race we can't rule out anyone you can't take anyone for granted um, and so we'll keep an eye on them too and hopefully we can continue to make the progress uh, and and battle on through the league but at the end of the day top of the league again so there we go it's been the analysis hope you enjoyed the video if you did enjoy the video make sure you leave a big thumbs up make sure you press the red button and subscribe if you are new around here or if you're enjoying the content uh, and make sure you press the bell to put your push notifications on you'll be notified when i've uploaded we've got daily football and manchester city videos coming up over the next month or so so lots to look forward to and lots to talk about so hope you'll go and enjoy them videos too and make sure you check out my social media links in the description below and i'll see you all again for the next video so it's been jsgc i hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day peace ciao for now